As I mentioned, I'm Rebecca with Holacracy One. I fill a number of roles and, you know, I didn't think about this, but Matt or Jen, if you want to put a link to my profile in Holacracy One into the chat window, you are welcome to check out some of the roles I hold at Holacracy One. The ones that I enjoy the most range from making branded products, really cool pens and notebooks, to the work I do all over the world helping organizations better define their governance and better use holacracy practice to redistribute power and authority in their organizations. And a key tool for doing that is GlassFrog. We couldn't do it without it. So if you're looking at my screen, uh, which I hope you are now, here we are at the GlassFrog sign-in. We do offer both integration with Google and single sign-on, but for now, since I'm using kind of a, an account that I put together, some of this may look familiar if you've ever been to one of our trainings, I'm gonna log in and get us to what I would call GlassFrog Home. So I'm gonna log in as the coach account that I set up for this. And here we go. So if any of you remember Hygiene from the practitioner training, this is just a little mock company that we use to help teach about holacracy practice called Hygiene. You're welcome to uh, explore around if you want to. It's glassfrog.com slash Hygiene1, but really I'm gonna take you through it here, so just share the screen with me. So here's what I would call Glassfrog Home. Over here on the left, Here's my profile. You'll notice I don't have a picture in here. I have the option of going back to the classic uh, user interface, but I really, really like the new one. In fact, I'm kind of curious. Uh, are you guys using the uh, new UI or the classic UI? I just launched a poll in the glass in the chat window. So I've got I'm seeing it populate right now and really appreciating how quickly you guys are responding. It looks like about three quarters of you are using the new UI, which is good. I'm gonna stay in that then. And I'll leave this poll open for just another moment. <laughs> and, uh, Rick, I see you. I think you guys are using the new UI and I love it too, Meg. So I'm gonna end the poll. Yep, we're just about three to one and just so you can see, here are the results. And so I'm gonna to stick to the new UI. Starting over here on the left, you have this little drop down window of your stuff. Now the orgs that you're in, we do support multi-organization use in GlassFrog. It's all based on your email address. So if for some reason you are in multiple organizations, they'll show up here the one that you're actively using at the time is going to have a green dot next to it. And if there are any others underneath, it means that there are other organizations you're logged into using the same email address and you can switch to them from here. You can view your profile. So here's me, here's my coach. I'm not in any circles or assigned to any roles, but you can use tags. We have a tagging system in Holacracy One, or in GlassFrog, excuse me. And what's cool about this is it's a great way to sort using your own sorting tools. In the Holacracy One governance, if you wanted to look at ours, you'll see that we use tags for all of the policies related to a certain uh, area of the company, our compensation you can search by tags using the search window. So anything that is tagged to the same thing or uses the same tag is searchable. It's just one more level of cross-referencing you can use in GlassFrog. I think it's super handy. To add a tag, hit the plus. You'll notice there aren't any here. I can just call this new tag. I now have a new tag. I can exit it. And now when I go back in, my new tag is here. So tags are great. I encourage you to use them. Let's go out of my profile. Let's go to my, these are my personal settings. Now these are different from the admin settings from the whole org. This is where you'd add your picture if you wanted to change your email or go back to the classic UI. Why would you? 
or change your password, here's where you do it. And also, one of the newest features we have is we have individual language settings for each user. So if you're more comfortable in a language other than the default language of your organization, you can use it here. I'm gonna leave it in English because that's the language I'm most comfortable in. So going back to our home base, notifications is really handy. If you have, you're in multiple circles, maybe you don't wanna get an individual email every time there are meeting outputs. Maybe you just want a daily digest. Here's where you can change that setting so that you get one email per day rather than multiple about updates to your circles. Also, I'm only in one, I'm not in any circles here, but for every circle you'll, you're in, you'll notice you can change notification preferences. You can also decide whether or not you wanna get emails from us or uh, about glass fraud updates. Your authority is pretty cool. We don't use it a whole lot, but I'm gonna show you something pretty neat. If I, since I don't fill any roles in this coach account, I don't have anything in my authority. However, watch what I do here. I'm gonna sign out of the coach account and I'm gonna sign in as, I made another little account here. I'm signing in as someone who fills the role of training scheduler. So, if I now sign in, you'll notice my name is gonna change. This is the training scheduler, her name is on a time. And if I do the same drop down to authority, it's asking me what role I serve, training scheduler in the GCC. Here we go. And it'll tell you, does your action or decision significantly, it brings you through this flow chart to help you determine, do you have the authority to take action? Because remember the golden rule of holacracy, you have the authority to make any decision or take any action that serves your role unless you violate the rules of the Constitution or violate a domain held by another role. Right now, I'm thinking I want to schedule a new training. Does my action or decision significantly impact or exert control with any of the following domains? It's not going to impact role assignment or the marketing budget or pricing or the constitutionally required records, role assignments, or here we go, core roles. I'm not impacting any of those domains, so check there. Does my, do I violate any of the policies? No training can, can be confirmed unless it has been scheduled by the training scheduler. Well, I am the training scheduler, and do I need to spend any money? If so, I need a budget from an authorized role, usually the lead link, but right now I'm just setting a schedule, I'm not spending any money. Does it dispose of any company property? No, and if I've answered no to all of these questions, I can go ahead and act. So this flowchart is super handy if you're thinking of doing something and you just kinda wanna do a litmus test. You don't even need any other human for this. You have it right here. So integrations and API, I'm gonna leave those out for now because they are much more advanced features and I, I think we're kind of constrained on time. So I'd like to move down to these reports. This is, these are three really handy things, uh, specifically if you are a user and not necessarily an admin. So before I move back, while I log back in as the coach, I want to ask another question. I want to see how we're, how we're uh, differentiated out here. How many of you are glass frog admins or don't have to worry about it because somebody else does it. So while you're answering that question, I'm going to log out as on a time and log back in as the coach. Huh, got about a, an even split right now. All right, so I've hopped back into the coach account. Now the coach account, when I go back into my drop down menu, you're gonna see there are a couple more things here because this account is set up as an admin. If you're a user, you saw that you had 
everything up here. You have the membership list and Holacracy stats. You can also search in the projects. But now I also have some additional settings. From here is where I can add or edit members. If I click into account members, here are all the members of Hygiene One. You'll notice some are listed strictly as viewers. These are people who don't currently have roles in any of the circles in the organization. I can set them up as admins. I can add members using this button up here. Or if I mouse over someone, I can view the roles they have, edit their email address or password. By the way, this is how an admin usually goes in to reset someone's password if they've forgotten it. Easy to do here. Just click on edit. The user will come up and you can add a new password for them. This is great if they can't do it themselves or if you have a new user and you want to add them in quickly. You can also add them in, you can Just also remove user, users from here. And uh, this is handy for when you have someone leaving your organization. So additionally in here, you have global checklists and metrics. This is pretty cool. These are all the checklists and metrics that are in every circle in the organization. You can add them from here. If you wanted to organize a checklist item for a new Holacracy habit you're working on, let's say you're pretty new to Holacracy and you want to encourage the positive practice of referring to role in addition to a human. So if I'm asking for Matt some, uh, asking Matt for something in his webinar support role, rather than just saying, hey Matt, can you do this thing for me? I want to say, Matt, in your role as webinar support, can you help me with a task or project? Maybe I want to put a checklist item in globally for remembered to refer to role in addition to person. These types of checklist items are super handy to add globally to help reinforce habits. Now remember, unless you can expect it from a role, these checklists and global metrics will be optional to each person choosing to do or not do the task. So the last two things we have on here are your habit support. And right here, I haven't gone to it because anyone can see it, are your Holacracy stats. Now, for Holacracy stats, what I really want to show you are the ones in Holacracy 1. So I'll show those in just a moment, because right here, you're not going to see much in Hygiene. But I can at least take you through what you're going to look at. If you have multiple circles, you're going to see these stats for any circle in your organization, even the ones you might have just created. What you're looking at is the name of the circle, whether or not there's an elected secretary. In this case, in our general company circle, there is no elected secretary, which is probably why meetings aren't getting scheduled. Huge red flag for Holacracy practice, by the way. Make sure you have elected secretaries and make sure those tactical and governance meetings are getting scheduled. You'll see how many roles versus how many members are in the circle, how many days it's been since the last governance meeting and tactical meeting, which we term here as operations, the average number of days between the meetings, which is handy, and the average number of proposals per month or items per meeting that are being triaged in operations or processed in governance. And if you're working with a holacracy coach, they're looking at these often to determine the health of your practice. If you're doing it on your own, these are great tools to have. Some of the red flags you want to look for are circles that don't have secretaries, new circles that are going for more than about a week without scheduling a tactical meeting or two weeks between a governance meeting, and circles that are keep that show an a really low average, maybe only one or two items in a tactical meeting or zero items in a governance. I've had a request here to make my screen bigger so I can so you can clearly see what's on it. Let me give it a try. Let's command plus. Better? I'll move. I'll have to move over a little bit, but this should help just a little. Let's see. So uh, I think it was. Katie, if you're on, you're my litmus test now. Better. Great. Excellent. So here are your stats, and you're going to see these for each circle. The last thing I'm going to point out for you is the habit support program. This feature, if you're on uh, our free version of Glassfrog, is not available to you. So unfortunately, 
either join premium or uh, just pay attention because you may want to do this, you may not. But for those of you who are on our premium Glass Frog subscription, this is something available to you. In fact, I'm going to end the admin poll and let's take a look. How many of you are on the uh, free version of Glass Frog versus the paid version? I have a polling question for that. I'm going to stop sharing those results and let's bring in that polling question. And let's take a quick look. What type of glass? And if you're not sure, I gave you an option for that too. All right, populating quite quickly. You guys are so responsive. I really appreciate it. Okay, so this is great to know. And I'm going to end the poll here. Almost everyone's responded. And really good to know, we're about split. So if you are on the free version, I'm sorry you won't have access to this, but maybe you'll be interested. Uh, if you're on the premium or you're not sure, this is what you, if you're on the, the premium version, what you will see is this Holacracy Habit Support Program. This is a year long program that provides uh, frequent emails and tips for how to develop the habits necessary for good Holacracy practice. And one thing that I notice with Glass Frog admins is I'm going to click on it here is everyone starts in the Glass Frog Pro, uh, Holacracy Habit Support Program. And then you get someone new and they need to start. So right now, uh, no one in this organization, in my little hygiene company, has started the Holacracy Habit Program. So I have some options here. I could enroll everyone by just clicking name. I can enroll certain people. Or if I didn't want to start this yet, I can actually come over here and pause the whole habit program. I can also enroll members by circle. So if I just want to enroll the eight people I have in the general company circle, I can enroll them together. And this will start them getting, you'll notice if I scroll down here, now you can see I have 11 members enrolled and a list of uh, 22 other members who are not members of the general company circle who have not yet enrolled. Down here in the enrolled members, I can unenroll them I can see how many lessons they've received, how many lessons they've completed, meaning interacted with the emails they receive, or I can unenroll them. I can also start someone over once I unenroll them. And then this is really handy. I can automatically enroll new members. If I don't want to do this, if I want to give them a little break before they, uh, between when they start in my organization versus when I want to enroll them in the habit program, I can always uncheck this. My advice as a coach is to keep this checked because it's daunting enough sometimes for new joiners to work in a new company. And now if they've got someone verbally telling them there's a new way of working, you're going to have to do a bunch of habits and you may have to change the way you, you work for your visual learners and your introverts. It's often handy to say you're going to get some emails in your own good time. Here are some new habits to develop and get to them when you get a chance, knowing you can always unenroll them and start them over. So there's my, there's my brief uh, intro to the habit program and how you use it. Going to your organization settings if you're an admin. The name of the org, the industry, the time zone you're in, the default language to the organization, knowing that individual users can change their preferred language. And then if you would like to enable asynchronous proposals, which means that someone can send out a governance proposal outside of a governance meeting, here's where you would enable that. If you're a brand new organization, I would encourage leaving that off just to start because one of the loops you might find yourself in is unless you've defined a policy setting a time limit on your asynchronous proposals, if someone stumbles into this, finds it, tries to send an asynchronous proposal, it's in an infinity loop because you've not defined your time limit on the broadest circle. So enable it as soon as you're ready. I love asynchronous proposals, but it's often confusing when you're just starting. 
Also, if you'd like to make your governance publicly visible, meaning that anyone with the link can find your governance records, they will not, however, be able to access any documents that you've shared that are privately shared on a Google Drive or in any kind of internet, even if you have linked to your governance. It only shares your GlassFrog governance records. You can click this publicly visible uh, checkbox and you'll get your public URL to share. You want to look at Holacracy One's governance, ours is public. So that's your settings. Choose whatever you want and update it here. Just before we left that window, you'll notice that there's a link to upgrade from Holacracy. I'm going to go back in because this is very, very special and I wouldn't recommend doing it unless you are very well practiced. But if you wanted to upgrade to Holacracy version 5.0, we're in beta with our new version of the Constitution, and there are a few new functionalities in GlassFrog to support uh, 5.0. Wouldn't recommend it yet. We also have a great integration with Slack, and you can actually tag roles in Slack, and they come through to GlassFrog. You can make requests of other roles, add projects and next actions through Slack, which then integrates with GlassFrog. And we don't have time to go into the technical details, but it's, it's very, very cool. So let's go back. One last thing. I'm not even going to worry about plans and billing. If you're on the free version, don't worry about it. If you're on the premium, you've already done it. Your admin took care of it. So that is your personal menu. So let's talk a little bit. Uh, I've got a few questions here. I'm going to take a quick look at questions, make sure that I haven't missed anything relevant to this. And then I will go into a governance meeting and show you some of the really cool stuff about proposal builders. Uh, got something, uh, there's a question about the habit support program. Is there new information? There is some new information. If it's been, let's see, if it's been a few years since you've done it and you're on premium, no reason not to start it over. I wouldn't start it over for everyone, but super useful and better to reinforce the habits that maybe over the last three years might have slipped a little. So certainly can't, uh, certainly can't help or can't hurt. Uh, we have a question about where the tags are. Is, it, is the potential to add tags visible on the free version? I see all the rest of the functionality. You know, I'm not sure if tagging is available on the free version. I'm gonna ask Matt to add that into the chat window when he finds out or into the Q&A. And then where is Microsoft Teams integration? I don't believe that it's in settings yet. And uh, I'm not sure if it's in the pipeline. But if you want it, definitely send an email to support at glassfrog.com with your request and see if uh, they can get it into the pipeline. That's handy. Um, probably a good uh, a fellow attendee has been kicked out of the webinar. I'm not sure what, uh, bummer. How do they get back in? Maria, I'm not sure. They could probably just click the link again and join and rejoin, I hope. Typically when someone gets kicked out of the webinar, it's usually due to bandwidth. So I hope that gets them back in. You tried. In that case, I'm going to ask Matt and Jen to triage with Marie to try and get uh, their colleague back in the meeting while I keep going. I'm sorry that happened. So let's move us out of the admin and I'm going to take you down some of these items. So this inbox is where you live in terms of getting stuff out of your head. Remember that the goal of Holacracy practice is to process tensions. If you don't remember your tensions, you can't process them. So the moment, the moment you have a question or you want to get some information, you want somebody to do something, or maybe you just want to get something out of your head for later, open up your inbox and grab attention. Call it anything you want. And that's enough for now. You don't have to do anything with it at this point. You have options. I don't have any roles in this circle right now, so I'm just gonna add it. Right now, I could if I wanted to. I could create an action from this, create a project, create an agenda item, meaning bring this item to governance without having to draft a proposal, 
or if I know what I want someone to do, or if I have a proposal I'm thinking of for governance, I can click on draft proposal and start it right from here. So in order to give myself some, a little more meat here as coach, I better add myself to a role. I'm gonna exit out of this, go back into the green frog. Remember the frog is always gonna get you back home. I don't really need my menu right now, so I'm gonna click out of my menu using this little toggle to bring me shortcuts on the side. And here in the GCC, my general company circle, I've now got a bunch of easy places to get to about my circle. I wanna get myself a role. I am going to assign myself into the role of finance along with my colleague, Johnny Cash. In order to do that, uh, this is an admin privilege only. I'm gonna click on that little human plus, which is to add a role filler. I'm gonna add myself in. If I start typing my name, I will, anything will pop up. I'm gonna click add. And now I have two role fillers in the role of finance. So now, if I go back into my inbox and I go new tension, just like I did before. Oops. Let me refresh here. Let's do a little refresh. Make sure I'm actually in the role. All right, take two. There we go. Now I'm in the finance role. I have a fine, I have a tension. My tension is people keep booking first class tickets. They are very pricey. So if that's all I've got, that's fine. I could click add. It would show up in my tensions and I don't have to do anything. So keep the bar low for yourself. Use this as a scratch pad, put anything you want in it. And if you're not sure where to go from here, just click add knowing you can come back to it later. However, I think, you know, I, I don't really need any actions because I'm not sure what to ask for. Uh, maybe I, I'd rather create a project. I want to investigate how much money are we spending on these first class tickets versus coach. So maybe I'm gonna click on create project and you'll notice we've got a Brian says here, a project is an end result you'd like to achieve. It takes more than one step to complete and may take some thought work to break down into clear next actions. Now, for most of you, this is gonna be old habit. Projects have to be formed in the past tense in order to have clear understanding of what done looks like. So the outcome I wanna achieve is, I just wanna find out cost difference, between first class and coach investigated. I'm taking this on in my role as finance in the general company circle. What's really cool here is I can even add the accountability that my role has that pertains to this project. So establishing accounting processes, reviewing all, processing all needed financial transactions and providing financial targets to sales. You know what, I don't know if any of these really fit, but it certainly serves my role, so I'm just gonna leave it as not specified. Don't feel compelled to attach every project to an accountability. Better that you've captured it than to have it perfectly matched. Maybe that also surfaces a tension for me that it doesn't match an accountability, but right now, it still serves my role. I can, the status is current. If I wanted to link something here, I could maybe link to our, if we had a pricing document or we had any kind of internal travel policies, I can add a link here. And remember, even if my governance is public, if the link is private, the information is still protected. And then if I had a note or anything I wanted to share, I could type it in here. You'll notice because this is associated with an item in my inbox, it already puts a note in there that lets me know that this project is in part to resolve the tension I have about people keeping, uh, keep, who keep booking first class tickets. The value and effort, you're welcome to use these. I, I wouldn't worry about them if you're fairly new to Glass Frog. It's a uh, general estimate of, call it one to 10, meaning that a 10 value project is super valuable to the org, a five 
about half as valuable. The effort is, it's your own best guess. If you think it takes a moment, maybe it's an effort of one, takes a day, effort of two, use your best gauge, then the ROI will be automatically calculated if you fill both of those in. Honestly, unless you have good rubrics for these values and efforts, everyone's gonna have their own scale, so it's hard to compare, but it's just a useful tool that's available for you. So I've got this, I'm gonna create the project, and now if I were to go into my projects list, I would see I have a new project of cost difference between first class and coach investigated. So this will automatically sit on my circle. I'll report on it in the next tactical meeting. If I had chosen an action, it will be here in my actions list. But you'll also notice that when I was in projects, if I wanted to add an action in service of this project, and if for those of you who are practicing good GTD practice, you'll notice this looks very familiar. If I want to use Glassfrog as my trusted system to capture my next actions and projects, I can do it here by adding actions that will serve this project. So let's say I have an action here to research ticket purchases. Or maybe I'll just put, because I'm noticing my brain says that looks to me more like a project. I probably have to take multiple steps. So rather than that, I'm gonna change it to pull credit card data. Because that I can do once in one step. I can now add that action and that will also be public. I can check it off when it's done and I can show my entire circle what actions I have in service of my projects. So. Handy to use. I'm going to take a quick pause here to uh, see if there are any new questions. I don't see a lot of new ones. Um, please feel free to add them. And uh, I got one here. Can I discuss the difference between adding attention via the inbox view and adding it via the agenda items view? Absolutely. In fact, let's move to that because we're going to add uh, an agenda item for a uh, is this all on the old version of the UI? No, this, uh, not really. The old version doesn't have quite as many features. A little sub, sub answer there. So agenda items, you'll notice that the uh, user interface looks a little bit different here. Same place to log attention. So don't let not knowing where this agenda item needs to go stop you from logging attention. And add my new tension in here. This is where you can choose which circle it goes in, the role that is sensing the tension, and the distinction here between an inbox item where it's just getting it out of your head and all options are open is an agenda item is distilling those options down to, do I want to add this for a tactical meeting or a governance meeting? And this is where you can start queuing proposals for governance meetings, which we'll do next. So you know what? I've decided that my tension around ticket pricing is really surfacing attention for me. I don't want people to be booking first class tickets. I think they're too expensive. So I've got a governance tension now. I want to expect, I want to set a new expectation that members of my company are, you know, doing some due diligence before they book first class tickets versus booking economy. There's a place here for an agenda label because, let's see, looking at time, I'm gonna show you what happens if you don't give a proposal an agenda label, you end up with a really long agenda item. And I have, I, I have options here. If I'm not sure what I wanna propose, fine, great. I don't need a perfect starting proposal. All I need is attention. I can just click add it to the agenda and it will cue it for the next meeting. Or let's say I have an idea of what I might like to propose. I can save it and write a proposal about it. And now, I'm hoping this looks familiar, this is our proposal builder. So I could type in my tension, the role that feels the tension, and now I can actually start adding and editing roles to prepare. And so let's say I want to do a new policy, and I want this policy to be coach tickets. And right now, I just want a policy that says, no role may book 
first class tickets. I imagine this is going to surface tensions uh, for other members of my circle, but that's okay. Let them have their tensions. So my tension here, I'm just gonna put first class tickets are too expensive. All right, and I'm gonna save it. It now shows up in my proposals. And there it is. So you'll notice that this is here as queued for meeting because I chose it as an agenda item. Now this is a really important distinction. I'm going to now go in as coach and as I'm doing this, I'm gonna stop sharing the results of the uh, last poll and I want you to think for just a second, if you could do one thing, if, uh, if you got one thing out of this, if you wanted to be better at something, I'm gonna ask you, of these four things, which would you like to be better at? Because I'm gonna take us from our general view into what it looks like, I think, in the governance meeting. Uh, because I think that between proposal building, Glassfrog using a secretary, which I'm noticing general Glassfrog user seems to be the winner right now. But just behind that is proposal builder. Proposal builder and secretary are looking about even. So I'm going to take us back to home using the frog. And I'm gonna start a governance meeting and I'll show you a few really cool things you can do to navigate within a governance meeting to help yourself and your circle. So up here in the top right, I'm gonna start a meeting. Any circle member can start a meeting even if they're not elected. Because remember, if an elected secretary is not available, someone else can be appointed to fill the role. So I'm gonna start a governance meeting and my screen will change. And you'll notice in addition to being able to add agenda items here, where I can just add something and hit enter, any election for any unfilled role will automatically be added to uh, the agenda. So I'm going to take them off for now. Uh, I see a question in the chat. Are all next actions public? Not necessarily. You can make them private to circle if you'd like. You may certainly keep those private to circle. And also I want to remind you that Glassfrog, though capable of being your trusted system, does not have to be your trusted system. So if you're concerned about intellectual property or anything private, you can either leave your next actions in a different system or mark the entire project as private to circle and then it won't show up if you have a publicly visible URL. So one of the most recent additions to Glassfrog, which I love, is the import tensions function. So you remember in that last screen, I had built a proposal that was queued for governance. I can click on import tensions. This will only import my tensions. And you'll see it's here. First class tickets are too expensive. If I have a proposal built, which I do, I have a policy, I can click add to agenda. It will populate in the meeting. And when I click on it, you'll see my starting proposal. So anytime you have a starting proposal, you can do it here. I can also do this for other members of the circle. So I happen to know because I built them earlier today that a few of my colleagues in my fictional company have tensions. I happen to know that, can you see me in the role of marketing? I believe, look at that, has a website manager tension. Now, little glass frog pro tip. If I just import this as is, you see this really, really, really long item label? That's what's going to show up in my agenda item. And good practice when building an agenda is what? one to two words just to hold the place. So I usually won't even, if I'm serving a secretary, I might say, okay, can you see me? You wanted me to import your attention. What do you want to call it? Give me one to two words. Or I might wait for the facilitator to do that. Or I might just take the first two words and add it to the agenda. I might even spell them right. So I can add it to the agenda here. And it's, oh no, it still added the whole thing. I didn't save it, so I can, the good news is here, I can X this tension, I can go back into import tensions, and let's see, it should now add it with two words. I just did it a little too fast. 
So now if I click on this, I'll see that I, there's a starting proposal here as well. Now, a quick note from me taking off my webinar hat and putting on my Holacracy Coach hat, never feel like you can't add something to the agenda just because you don't have a proposal. All you need to have an agenda item is attention. So better to just add it knowing that the process will help you figure out what you want to propose. So better to just add it into your agenda items and queue it for a meeting. Now here's, uh, let's say that Anna Time also told me that she had attention she wanted to add, but I don't see anything. This, I guarantee at some point this is going to happen. Now that what happened here almost all the time is when Anna Time built her proposal, she clicked save rather than queue for meeting. So super, super quick, I'm gonna log out. I wanna show you what this looks like because it gets frustrating both as the secretary who wants to be of good service importing the attention and for the person who thought they made a proposal and now it's not showing up. So pro tip here, make sure you're clicking queue for meeting rather than save. So I am going to log back in as on a time, which is TS at hygiene1.com. And you'll see here, I'm now logged in as on a time. If I go to my proposals, I'll see I have one in draft, but it's not queued for meeting. And that's why when my secretary was trying to import it, they couldn't. So if I click on the little pencil, notice I don't have any changes for the governance yet. I don't know what I wanna propose, I just have attention. I'm gonna click on queue for meeting rather than save. I'm gonna give it just a moment here. And then you'll notice I have my purple bar up here because I'm a member of the circle that already has a governance meeting in process. I'm gonna join that meeting. I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna take over as secretary because I could import my own tensions. I'll see that it's up there, I need to give it a better label. But rather than doing that just here, I'm gonna take over as secretary and now you'll notice I have the option to import from others. So I'm gonna import mine and I'm just gonna call it sales and it should, there we go. So now because I've changed it from saved to queue for meeting, I can import it. So remember, if you want to bring something to an agenda, to a meeting, or even if you don't, if you're not sure, the safer bet is to click on queue for meeting rather than save, because if you don't have your computer there with you and you've joined a meeting and the secretary is importing tensions for others, if yours isn't queued, you won't be able to import it. So if you're not sure, better to add it because you don't have to. Now, uh, for those of you who maybe went to my secretary webinar, one brief moment of caution. Just because there are tensions to import doesn't mean you have the right to do it without the permission of the person who owns that tension. So when the facilitator is asking for agenda items, typically the agenda item holder will say, oh, I've got something ready for the meeting. Can you import it for me, please? Or they'll call out the agenda item. What you don't wanna do is cross the line from active to activist secretary and just start trolling to see who has agenda items. Let's see, uh, oh, can you see me? Can you see me has a 10? There's a tension here, it's already been added. I think I have one more that I pre-built. Johnny Cash has one as finance. So it's here. But without the owner's permission to add it to the agenda, I have no right to add it. So avoid as a secretary being an activist secretary and adding them just because they're here. But turns out Johnny had asked me to, say, to add this. It already has a two word agenda item label and I click to agenda item and here is my agenda to start. So I could pick whichever one I want and go from there. So that's how to import your own and other people's tensions. One quick little hint, um, sometimes items will come up in a tactical meeting that are saved for governance, but don't necessarily have a proposal uh, attached to them 
or haven't been saved and queued for a meeting. So if you wanted to check, checking your circle's history, and I'm gonna do this in a new tab because I don't wanna lose my meeting. Checking your circle's history is often beneficial, especially if you're new in practice, to start determining whether or not items are still alive, tensions are still alive. So your facilitator might ask you to go over to the history of your circle, which is right here, and it's going to show you all of the history of both governance and tactical meetings. And this was a very long uh, governance or tactical meeting that happened during a training. I'm not going to click into it, but you could. Actually, why not? We'll click into it. It'll show you the outputs, and you'll notice that of the outputs of the meeting, there was one governance tension. And for newer circles, or if you're trying to get into the good practice of bringing your governance tensions that you pulled during tactical meetings to your next governance meeting, a facilitator might just ask the owner of this item, is this still alive for you? Would you like to add it to the agenda? Just remember that there's no pressure to add it because it may not still be alive. It may have been processed elsewhere. So that's where you would find the history of your circle. Very, very handy. It also will show you role assignment history. If you click on view assignment history, it'll show you who's been in the roles. So we have about 13 minutes left. I could probably keep talking for another hour about all the cool things you can do in Glass Frog. But what I'd like to do is prioritize your questions for the next 10 minutes and see what's alive for you. I'm going to end the poll here and check my polls to see if I have any that I thought would be handy to use. Nope, I think I'm good. So your questions, what's alive for you? And if you have questions, feel free to put them into the Q&A box. Oh, what does private to circle mean? Great question, I'll show you. Private to circle, oh, Jen Sposit is going to answer this question live. Ah, I'll answer this, uh, this question live. And then I'll get to, I saw a question just got added in the chat. No problem with that, but try to add the questions into the Q&A because that's where I'm gonna see them. Um, what needs, to, okay, so let's do a quick, what does private to circle mean? Private to circle is something you can put in projects. So I'm gonna leave this meeting open. I'm gonna go into my projects. If I wanted to add a new project, I can click private to circle. This means no user outside of my circle can see this project. In very large organizations, there might be intellectual property concerns or there might be other reasons why you want to keep projects constrained to the circle working on them rather than having them open for the entire organization or the public. So that's what private to circle means. Uh, what needs to be kept in mind with the non-premium version? The two biggest things, in my opinion, are the meeting history. You don't have access to your meeting history if you don't have Glass Frog Premium. So, I, so you miss out on anything that was captured in a previous meeting that, you, that might have served you well. You'll have access. There are still, there's still tremendous functionality in the free version of Glass Frog, but History is missing, as is the habit support. And if you are trying to adopt Holacracy on a budget, which many of our users who are using the free version are, the habit support program is one of the least expensive, highest return tools. I, I told my colleagues I didn't want this to get salesy because I don't. I just want you all to be great Glass Frog users. Good Holacracy habits support good Glass Frog use and vice versa. So the habit support program is available only to premium users. If you want to know more about that, uh, shoot us an email, send me an email. I'll tell you, I'll, I'll geek out about our habit program as long as you like. But those are the two key functionalities that are not available in the premium subscription. I think there might be a couple other things around integrations and API stuff that are not available to premium users, but I don't know for sure. Uh, can I, let's see, how to process a tension in Glassfrog. So 
I see this question and I would love to answer it. Uh, if uh, Raphael, if you could put in the chat maybe a little bit more uh, what you mean by how to process attention, because if you're look, if the yeah, I'll leave that for just a second. If you could put in maybe just a little bit more detail, there's a, there's so many different ways to process attention using Glass Frog, but the best way is just to try something. So the examples we gave of bringing it to a meeting adding a project, adding a next action. Once you add something to your inbox, here are, when you're adding something in, I don't have any items now, but remember, here are kind of your four good pathways to do something. Do you wanna create an action, either for yourself or someone else? Do you want to create a project, either for yourself or someone else? Do you wanna create an agenda item for a tactical meeting, because remember, create action and create project are for you. These are to put them into your action list and your project list. Create an agenda item, meaning you want to take it to a tactical meeting and ask some other role to do something, or you want to set a new expectation so you draft a proposal to bring to your next governance meeting. So those are the, the ways you might process attention in Glassfrog. Sometimes simply typing it out and getting some thought partnership is all you needed. Maybe you just wanted some data or input and you don't even need to wait for a meeting to get it. So better to capture the, tact the tension than figure out how to process it. But a tension not captured can't be processed. Can I demonstrate how to create a linked entity to a role in another circle? So I can try. I don't have V5 enabled in this uh, example organization. But remember, I can only create a linked entity to a role in another circle if I want to bring in an outside entity, a crosslink in 4.1 or a linked entity in 5.0. I can only do that during a governance meeting right now. So the way I might do that is to uh, go in here, add an agenda item for linked entity. And I could create a new role for the role filler uh, within my general company circle. Uh, I could create a duplicate of a current role in another entity. This one, this is actually a really cool kind of 5.0 thing. What I might do is if I wanted to link a role that exists in another entity, I might give it the same name and the per I wouldn't fill anything in for purpose. I would likely just create this, show the link, show the URL for the role I want to bring in from the linked entity because it would hold all of their accountabilities, their purpose, any domains they hold that would still be relevant. And then I, once that role was created, I'd add a role note with the URL from the linked entity until Glassfrog can support um, bringing in all of those accountabilities and the purpose of the linked entity role. I hope that answered your question. If not, please feel free to let me know. Where do you store next actions that are private to user, like HR stuff that might be in a larger circle, but you don't want to share them? You could, so private to circle is still going to make things visible for your own circle. Those I would probably store, if, if there's sensitivity to the data, I might store it in my trusted system outside of Glassfrog um, as a general rule. Um, so all drafts and queuing for meeting, uh, so queuing for meeting works in the free version, I believe, but what I did learn from Matt, who's my, uh, my, I would say magician's assistant, uh, is that asynchronous proposals are only available in the premium version as well. So if you're using the free version of Glassfrog, you have to do all of your proposals. You can't pre-build, or you can pre-build them but I don't think you can save them, uh, but you'd have to do them outside of your Glassfrog account. So you couldn't draft it and queue it for a meeting. That's a premium function as well. And you couldn't draft it and send it out asynchronously. So you can't pre-build the proposals. Uh, so if time is valuable, if you want to be able to allow your users to pre-build proposals, that's a premium feature as well. Let's see, linked entity, isn't it required to have a policy first? Yeah, um, yes. And I 
think, Luna, what you're referencing is a Glass Frog 5.0 beta question around linked entities. So yes, you would have to have a policy in place first. You might want to put that policy in place in the broader circle or in the linked entity circle. It depends on how you're linking in. You probably want to have it in both places. But again, this is a V5 beta question. So I'm going to defer for now uh, with the quick answer of yes, you do need to have a policy in place first. But if you wanted to show how to create the role in a linked entity, that would be the, the demonstration that I gave previously. So when will, oh, <laughs> the $64,000 question, when will V5 be available non-beta? Unspecified. I actually, there is a domain that controls the fact that I cannot uh, give an estimate. What I can share is that if you would like to try the beta, please feel free. We're very active in GitHub to get real world examples. We, uh, I suspect I have roles that care that we will have sessions at our annual Holacracy Forum on what we found out during the Glass Frog v or the Holacracy V5 beta uh, test period. And other than that, I cannot give an estimate on when V5 will be released in non-beta because I would be violating a domain. Uh, will there be an interface to GitHub directly from GlassFrog? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't know if that's on our, uh, on our, our sequence of stuff we want to roll out that has a very cool technological term that I don't remember. But um, if you wanted if you have a role that thinks the GitHub is relevant, great place to add a link in a role note. If you have a role that's really interested in providing feedback via GitHub, throw the URL into a role note. Super, super handy. And uh, there is, let's see, where can I get a recording of the session? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure if the recording is going to be released. Uh, send a quick response to our uh, to the follow-up email you'll receive. We have just a couple. Oh, apparently we are going to email out a session of the recording. Uh, that just came out in the chat. Very cool. And it looks like there is one uh, advertised potential clients that how do we work? Holacracy is our operating system. Do I have any? TNCs about using your trademark. Oh, so if you make your, so one thing I would suggest uh, in our, just our last minute, if you want to advertise to your clients, or if you want to share how your organization is different from others to your clients, make your URL public. And you don't have to worry at that point about trademark infringement because all you're doing is pointing them to your glass frog records that have appropriate use of the glass frog and Holacracy trademarks. If you have any questions about usage of the Holacracy terminology, feel free to just shoot us an email. But if you're using Holacracy and you want to tell your clients, we want to help you do it. So we'll provide additional information. With that, we are at the hour. So thank you so much. Loved all the questions and good luck. We are capturing any questions that did not get answered so that our glass frog circle can use them for additional knowledge base uh, articles and tips and tricks. And I'm sure we'll do this again at some point. You've got a link to my prof profile. Please feel free to connect with me via email or LinkedIn. You'll get a survey, I think, with uh, asking for your responses. And when in doubt, try something because there's nothing you're going to do that's going to break glass frog. So better to try something to process your tensions. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.